All right, so here we are. It is pipe check day on the 58 meter boom pump here. Corey's got his fancy dancy digital caliper. So what we got here is Conform's twin wall 275 pipe. So you're gonna need that upside down. Um, so this is a two millimeter mild steel outer shell with a two millimeter hardened uh, inner liner. So with this stuff here, basically when it is new, it is four millimeters thick. And then when the liner is completely worn out of it, it is down to two millimeters. So we like to change this stuff out when it gets down to about like 2.2, 2.3 mils, it's time to swap it out. You don't want to run it right down to the mild liner because the mild liner will wear out extremely, extremely quickly. Once you get to that point, uh, you're on borrowed time. So what we've got here, Corey's going to put the caliper on here. We're going to take a little bit of a measurement. And you see these pipes, he sucks back two sponges and they're still a little bit creamy. If you wanted to get those spotless, use a go devil. Some guys are going to say to water wash, not saying they're right or wrong. We just don't do it in our area for various reasons. But anyhow, let's, uh, let's get a measurement on this. Let's see what this pipe is at. This pipe has about 45,000 cubic meters pumped through it. And we usually see about, uh, about 70,000, 75,000 out of a set of this stuff is pretty common. So we got a measurement of 3.76. So that's lots of meat there. What about on the bottom side? 3.94. Now, taking into account the paint, it's going to add maybe 0 0.2, 0 0.3 to the actual measurement. So, but look on the top here, we're down at 2. Oh, yeah, 2.8, 2.7. So, what we're going to do here, that's actually getting a little bit thin considering we're this far out on the boom. Um, the closer in you get, closer to the source of pressure, typically the quicker it's going to wear. So we're going to take another measurement at what is on this particular boom, typically the worst, uh, the worst point in terms of wear. Coming out of the turret there, the elbow that leads into the first pipe on the boom, on the outside of the pipe, because the concrete comes ripping around that elbow, creates a lot of pressure on the outside of that pipe. We're going to take a measurement right there and see what it's at. But if we're down to like 2.8 mils back here at the end of the boom, I bet you up there, we're getting close to like 2.4, 2.5, possibly close to a uh, time to needing to change it out. But uh, we'll pop that elbow off, hit it with the caliper, and we will see what we got. All right, so we just got this button back up together here. As you can see, this particular uh, junction would be a not very fun one to, uh, to get a plug. It's all bolt together clamps, and it's a bit of a bear. But at least it went back together nicely. Okay, so just to clarify, uh, we checked with the manufacturer for this specific pipe. It's a 1.6 millimeter mild steel outer liner with a 2.5 millimeter hardened inner liner. So with this pipe, yes, we will replace it at about 2.2 to 2.3 millimeters of total thickness. Uh, the manufacturer recommendation is that you can run the pipe down to half a millimeter thickness on the inner liner, which would be 2.1 millimeters with this particular pipe. Um, we'll change it out 2.2 to 2.4, just to err on the side of caution. Um, but it is super important. Check with your supplier, your manufacturer, what the specifications are for your exact pipe. Um, even with this pipe, there's a couple different iterations of it. Uh, and those minimum thicknesses do vary based on which exact part number you have. So definitely get in touch with your manufacturer before you uh, start measuring things out and throwing pipe in the garbage or running pipe that's potentially too thin. All right, so Corey's just gonna raise this boom up and we're gonna rotate it over to the driver's side. The reason for that is the elbow that we're gonna work on, the position it's in right now, there's not really much room to stand and work on it. So we're gonna rotate the boom 90 degrees to the driver's side and then we can stand up on that nice deck surface and it's uh, gonna make it a way easier job for us. So big boom, moves a little slow. This will take a little while, so. Check back in at uno momento. Here. Just from raising the boom up with that clamp off, it exposes our elbow. We'll check the pipe, clean the ends off, drop the boom back down, put the gasket back on, clamp it up, bingo, bango. 
Much, much easier and better than trying to top the elbow down with a block of wood and a hammer. Uh, these are chrome carbide lined elbows. So you uh, do not want to apply any sort of blunt force to them or you can shatter that brittle hardened inner liner and the elbow will basically become garbage. So never, never, never on twin wall elbows beat on them with a hammer. Okay, so what we actually did here, we should have had this boom, the main section lowered more uh, horizontal before we did this because we have our hydraulic lines in the way here. So we actually can't, can't knock this elbow down as much as we need to. Um, so what we are going to do is take a block of wood and our, our hammer and we're just going to gently tap this elbow and we'll knock it over to the other side of the pipe here. Corey's going to demonstrate. It's tight, yeah, you won't get that sock over, so. Just over up all the way? Uh, no, you have to put the, the wood on the other side and knock it the other way, because that sock's tight, you'll never get that elbow over anymore. Okay, so go all the way this way? Yep. There we go. It's going to be a bit of a process. Oh, man. Yeah. Uh, okay, this is going to suck. So let's re-evaluate. Uh, I don't want to have to get in here and dick around can, loosening up these them. nuts. I get the, really, get the really don't. Drop it down inside and then back up inside. As far as trying to get that. Oh, and then just tap it back together? Well, yeah, yeah, this is a, uh, yeah, because we, we actually, down. our most critical measurement is going to be right here on the pipe, because that's where it's going to be worn the most. So if you can get up in there, good. I'm going to open it back up. Open it back up? Okay. Uh, well, let me just yeah, here. I think you're right. I think open it back up and we'll, we'll get in there. Because to knock it all the way past, and it's going to hang up here. That's going to be a, a pain in the butt. So we'll go back. Back with plan A, see how much we can move those hydraulic lines. Probably. The wood is failing. Good enough? Good enough. Before we put this back together, I'm going to use my fancy uh, carbide tipped Goodson Super Scraper here. Featured in one of my previous videos. Awesome for stuff like this. This hogs that right off of there. What do we got? 3.2. But you know what? There's a. F uh, yeah, I know there's not too much build up in that pipe actually. 3.4 over here. Okay, try it. This is going to be the nasty one, is on this side. You get it on the other side, you get a bit of here. Try and. Uh, I had a 2.9. Yeah, really. Put some pressure on that. Let's let's dig it right through the any kind of cream that's in there. Make sure we're getting a good true measurement. Mm -hmm. If you come down, yeah, it's quite dished out there. Yeah, but right now I'm sitting on top of that. Okay, so what are you getting? Three, I, I got a 3.0 right there. Okay, 306, 298. What if you go up a little bit? Okay, now we're getting fatter. Okay, that's actually not too bad. Uh, did you get the outside here? Show the outside. Three point four is the lowest I got. Three point three two. Okay. Three point two. Eight. That's pretty good. So we're still at three mils. Excellent. So the one thing I forgot here, we got to change out our rubber still. So Corey's going to lower the boom down, and we're going to put just the clamp onto here, rather than trying to fight it on with that gasket. Good. Put the clamp on, we'll swing the boom around, we'll lower the boom down nice and low. We'll take the clamp off, we'll lift the boom back up, and then we'll have lots of room to get that rubber off, which is kind of the way that we should have done this in the first place. We should have started with the boom nice and flat, but uh, we didn't, but this is, uh, we're keeping it real here. We're not gonna edit this to make it look like we really know what we're doing. We'll just uh, show you the truth that we kind of, sort of, maybe know what we're doing. So anyhow, I'm going to put this clamp on. With one hand on the camera.
And yeah, you got the idea. I'm gonna have to beat that on, which is gonna require two hands. So I'm gonna let the, let go of this for now and uh, check back in in a second. Clamp is on, rubber is not. That's by design. We'll snap this closed. Corey's gonna spin the boom around. Spin it around, then we'll drop this down. Unhook the clamp. Bingo, bango, change the rubber. All right, so here we are. We got our drop down over the back of the pump. We'll knock this clamp off. Might as well stay there. We'll lift it up right away. Pop this baby off here, like so. Now Corey's gonna lift this boom up, opening this up all the way, and then we'll just pull that rubber right off. Like I said, this is exactly how we should have done this in the first place. But uh, this is a bit of a refresher course for me on this pump. I haven't uh, played around with pipes on it for quite some time. Yeah, I take her up now. Here we go. All right, so there she is. Pull that rubber off, chuck a new one on. Drop this back down so it lines up. Easy peasy. So I think on this pump, he's been doing a six inch softball and then a five inch softball behind it and water in between. I would recommend using a five inch hard ball on the first round with zero water and then a ton of water and a five inch soft sponge and you wouldn't get uh, this little layer of cream. I mean, this isn't gonna hurt anything, but uh, it could be a bit cleaner. So anyhow, I'll take my little scraper here get these ends super clean. We'll just use a new one. There's no point trying to reuse a uh, an old rubber in this location. This one's swelled up pretty good, so we'll throw a new one on. For what they cost, we will use a new one. This is sort of one of those critical locations where if you ever had a plug or something on the prime, uh, this is not an uncommon elbow to have to pull apart. So we'll use a nice new gasket. So if we had to, God forbid, pull this apart on site, it's a lot easier to put it back together. We're not fighting an old swollen gasket, so. There we go, nice and clean. So we use the new gasket, we'll grease up the inside. We'll fill the cavity with grease. And the outside of the gasket, we'll just use some of this uh, spray film lubricant. I probably wouldn't even put grease in the clamp like Corey's doing. I find the spray film actually works better. The grease is just sticky. But I'm not going to micromanage him. It's okay. He's the one getting dirty, not me. Now we're going to wash the uh, grease away with the spray film lube. <laughs> uh, whatever. It totally works. Approved. Totally okay. Approved. Totally I'm questioning that, but... Uh, so now he's going to use his bare hands because he's... He's a man's man. Gloves are for, well, I won't even throw the word out there. I don't want to offend anybody. <laughs> so we'll fill that up. Just like so. So the grease can displace the concrete slurry. And if we ever have to pull this gasket off and clean it, it'll be a little bit easier. Eventually it'll slurry up anyhow, but uh, this just helps it a little bit. And I guess because we've already uh, lubed up the clamp, there's no need to lube up the outer diameter of the rubber. That's normally how I would do it. Just a little bit of WD-40 and work it around with my finger, but no big whoop. Probably should have pulled the old gasket off first, but that's okay. It'll still come off. Just ruining the video, eh? No, no, this is this is real, man. This is raw footage. <laughs> we don't edit anything. We don't edit shit around here. That's the appeal to the channel. It's real and it's raw. 
Okay, uh, drop it back down, I guess. Yep, we'll fire it up, drop it back down, that'll line up perfectly. We'll slide the rubber over, clamp it down, done. Catch on it. Pinchy thing. All right, here we go. We're dropping her back into position, and this is going to line up perfectly. No need for tap, tap, tap with a hammer. Tense moments here. I hope it works. Just like that. Slide that rubber over, snap the clamp on. Bingo, bango, done. Okay, so Corey Greasy Clamp Brown is gonna uh, finish this little installation here. We won't forget that wrench there, I promise. OCD here, we like to have all the handles and the clamps facing out at exactly the 12 o'clock position. These are the aluminum clamps, so if you don't get them knocked down all the way, they uh, really like to spring back up. I've never caught one in the chin before, ever, ever. And safety pins as usual. My other OCD thing, I always like the pins to go in this way because then when the boom is up, the pin is falling down. Not that ever in a million years it would actually fall out if it were facing up, but that's just one of those weird things that drives me crazy. So apparently the last guy didn't agree with me. <clears throat> it's okay. I'll get over it. It is, right? We knew that, I don't know why we didn't do it the first way like that, but uh, we're a little rusty here, so. so. That's it, we're done. A little bit of brake clean, we'll clean this up. This uh, blue grease here is so tacky, it just sticks to everything like crazy. So let's get brake clean and a rag, we'll wipe that off. And maybe we'll look at cleaning the rest of the pump here. The cab on the roof is kind of uh, cramping our style a little bit, or the concrete on the cab of the roof, I should say. So this boom has the auto greaser on it and it greases a lot, so you've constantly got little drippy drippies coming out of it, which I guess is better than not greasing enough. Uh, but even on its uh, most infrequent interval, it still greases it a lot, but it's okay. Too much grease is a good thing. Over and out. <laughs>